one of the common questions I get asked when it comes to teaching anybody a new game is, is it hard to learn? And I felt with some people, the more difficult a game, um, it, they kind of rise to the challenge. They kind of appreciate the complexity of it. However, I noticed that there is something really nice and easygoing about a very simple game with very, you know, limited rules. It's relatively easy to learn. It's usually those games that I find myself playing, you know, two, three, four, five times in a row. It's the kind of game I get asked to bring back to uh, gatherings that people love to play. And that is exactly what this little gem right here is. Sushi Go is probably one of the easiest games I have ever taught to anyone. Um, I'd say it's in my top three. Um, next to Ticket to Ride and possibly Suro, which maybe we'll do a video on that. But Sushi Go is a very easy card game and it's pretty much just basically you're building your best hand humanly possible out of cute, adorable little uh, sushis that you're going to be drawing um, every single turn. But rather than sit here and talk too much about it, I will say that this is in fact super easy to learn. It is a lot of fun. And depending on how you want to play, you can play this for the recommended time of three rounds, or you can play as long as you want. It is completely up to you, and actually, I think a lot of the fun comes with experimenting with the rules on the more simpler games. So it kind of like pads it out a little bit more, because this will go by relatively fast. But I'm not going to sit here and waste any more time. Let's get right into Sushi Go. Folks, this is a really simple game. It is just the tin that it comes in, the rules of the game, and the cards. That's really it. So, start off the game by deciding who is going to be the dealer. And then, you know, take a few minutes to shuffle all these cards and put them in the middle of the table. You're going to want to grab a stack of, of them to deal out to the people around you. Now, how this works, it's really simple, is that according to the rules, the hands that you're going to get dealt, the number of cards is going to change based on how many people are, in fact, playing the game. If we go right to where it says setup, and I'll try to do a good job of showing this off, um, the, the lower the number of the people playing, the more cards everyone gets dealt. Now, this has you max out to five players. I have, in fact, played this game with six. It's not too hard. I usually just keep the same seven card rule. Or if you want to go to six, that's fine too. So what you're going to do after you shuffle them all out, you're then going to, you know, pass out to a little, say, in this situation, there's four people playing. And then you're going to go around and until you hit the maximum number of cards needed per hand to start the round. I'm not paying attention because we're doing this on the fly. We're just we're going live. Then everyone's going to take their respective hands and we'll just say that's what everyone's doing here. And then you're going to look at your hand. As you can see here, this is the hand that we have been dealt. And you notice there's a lot of different cards that have say a lot of different things and you may get a little confused with it. That's okay. But here's how it works. I'm going to show you how turn works, and then we'll get into card explanation, and that'll wrap everything up, I'd say, with a nice little bow. So what you're going to do on your turn, you're going to take any one card in your hand that you want to keep, you're going to set it down in front of you, you're then going to take the rest of your cards, and then pass them to the person on your left, and then everyone's going to repeat the same, and, that, and then the person on your right is then in turn going to pass their cards to you and then everybody is going to reveal what card they have selected and that's going to be their lot for the turn or their their basically like their their sushi line however you want to call it but the cool thing about this is that each of these have really cool special abilities each of these cards do different things and I'll show you what they are right now so here are the cards guys uh, First of all, let me just say, these pictures are absolutely adorable. I love them. I, I wish the, the plushies were widely available. You can purchase them. They are expensive, though. But I love them. And the Sushi Party Go has several different more cards, which just kind of adds to the overall aesthetic. It just it makes sushi so adorable. Give me, a, give me a thumbs up if you think that the sushi here is adorable. 
But anyway, so yeah, every one of the cards does something different, and we'll kind of go in a we'll kind of go in order here. Starting with right here, we have this right here, which is called uh, sashimi. I always pronounce that wrong. You notice it says sashimi times three equals ten. Now, what that means is that by the end of the round, meaning that when there are no more cards to pass to the person on your left, that ends the round, you figure out points. If you have three sashimi sitting on your side of the table, basically what you set down in front of you, you get 10 points. Over here we have tempura shrimp, or just tempura. Um, uh, tempura times two equals five, meaning you need to have at least two of these in front of you to get five points. If you only have one, you get nothing. Down here, you notice I have these three cards just kind of chilling together. These are the nigiris. You have an egg nigiri, a salmon nigiri, and a squid nigiri, uh, respectively one, two, and three points. And honestly, they're just little filler points. However, the cool thing is if you have this bad boy and you play it before you get any one of those. The wasabi, it says next nigiri times three. So let's say um, opening hand, you get this, you put it down, you flip it, and then you get the nigiri. Okay, well then on next turn, um, the person's hand that just got passed to you, they have that bad boy in here. You take that, you put it down, and when you then reveal, it's squid nigiri, and because you played the wasabi before it, the next nigiri, meaning this, the next nigiri card you just played, is three times their point value. So this right here is nine points, so that's a pretty good way to get nine easy points. Um, and you just do that with any of them, so if you did it with the egg, you get three, the salmon, you get six. So, interesting little combo there. We got dumplings. These adorable little dumplings. You notice at the bottom it has weird little points uh, that make no sense. Um, pretty simple stuff. The numbers correspond with how many dumplings you have on your side of the table. For instance, if you have just the one dumpling, you get one point. If you have two dumplings, you get three points. If you get three dumplings, you get six. And it just keeps going on. If you have four, you get ten. If you have five, you have fifteen. So that's a good way to just to accrue extra points. Over here we have Maki Rolls. And this is a little more complex to explain. Maki Rolls, you'll notice that they have just one on here. Now there are cards in this deck that are going to have two as well as even three Maki Rolls on them. Now at the bottom it says Maki Roll Most 6 parenthesis, uh, yeah, 6 parenthesis 3. Now, what that means is that whoever has the most Maki Roll that one round is going to get 6 points, and whoever has the second most is going to get 3 points. Um, if there are ties for either first or second, they end up splitting the points. Uh, second place, if it's split, it just goes to one point. So you'll notice there when you're playing, you'll have one Maki Rolls that have one or two or three symbols at the top. So if you're going for the most, you definitely want to keep an eye out for those much larger ones. Now these two down here, are those are the problem, child. These two are a little harder to explain. So we'll start with the easier one, the pudding. The pudding by themselves do absolutely nothing. These are end game cards. How this works is very simple. If you see one of these in the, in your opening hand or in someone else's hand that gets passed to you and you choose to keep it and then you play it, at the end of the round, it does nothing. But after three rounds, you'll notice at the bottom, it'll if, if it'll focus, at the end, it says most six, least negative six, meaning that the person with the most puddings overall throughout the entire game gets six extra points added to their total. Whoever has the least, meaning even zero, they'll get six points taken away from the total. The chopsticks are the hardest ones to explain. How this works is very simple, but it's also a little complex. All right, so you get one of these bad boys, you play it down. So then on your next turn, or I'm sorry, after you reveal, you reveal you have chopsticks. So when the person's hand comes to you, on that turn, what you can do is then take two cards from their hand and then put the chopsticks back in that hand, and basically you just swapped out uh, two cards for this, and that inevitably will be a dead card for someone, uh, hopefully not you, by the end of the round. You'll understand it more when you play on your own, but essentially somebody at the end of the round will get stuck with the chopsticks, and by themselves they're worth no points. However, if you get them early enough, and maybe you get them with a wasabi with a nice nigiri, that's a neat little way to get some extra points. 
So those are the cards, this cute little sushi family. And honestly, that's really it. The rule book does a fantastic job trying to keep all of these, like all of how this works intact. But I honestly, I explained it all. There's really not anything else to add to this. Again, have fun with it, experiment with the rules, and see what becomes of it, guys. Like, have have five round games, have ten round games, go for the moon. There's no limit to where you can end this. And that's Sushi Go, a very simple game that anybody can learn how to play. It just takes a few minutes to learn how the cards work and to get a feel for the game. Honestly, this is, again, one of the easiest games I've I've uh, tried teaching people, and it's a, one, a big favorite every time I bring it to the table. Hold on one second. <laughs> anyway, um, I will say the pro, like I said, the pros of the game are it's really quick. Anyone can learn it in a good amount of time. You can adjust how many rounds you want to play. Basically the same thing I've been saying the entire video, but I can't emphasize it enough. When a lot of games don't allow you to really play with the rules that much. The cons, um... I feel like it's a game, depending on some people, it will it will feel like it's getting a little old, but I haven't had that happen with me. I thoroughly enjoy the game. Um, I definitely say the chance factor is relatively high because you don't know what cards you're going to get. So I don't really see the, the cons coming into play too often. If you're looking for a much meatier game, something a little more sustenance, maybe check out uh, the other big brother versions of this game like Sushi Go Party or Sushi, I believe it's called Sushi Roll For It, which is the dice version of it. But honestly, as it stands, this is a great game. Um, can easily do five people, no problem. Has clearly enough cards. So, honestly, the only thing that's stopping you is whether or not you feel comfortable spending the $10, $11 to get it. Honestly, this is well worth it. Um, I probably wouldn't go any further than 15, only because, like, it is such a, it's, it's a very simplistic game and doesn't really offer a whole lot else other than that. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this episode. If there's a board game that you'd really like me to talk about and maybe break down, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video. Uh, subscribe if you like this new line of videos coming out. Um, I know in the last video I said that this was going to be Forbidden Island. Although I have filmed that twice, and both times, I just, I, I run into so many computer issues, it is ridiculous. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe the game is cursed, I have no idea. So, um, we're just gonna kinda leave it up in the air, in uh, the next uh, episode when it comes out. Um, you'll just have to wait and see. So, until next guy, uh, time, y'all just keep gaming.